RFK and RCR make more changes. 2311 in front row head back to the drawing board, and James Small throws some shade at Martin Truex Jr. <laughs> How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. More news, more announcements, more off-season moves. Let's start with RFK Racing. They were already in the news earlier this week, signing Ryan Priest, adding Kroger, third full-time cup team. Today, they announced that crew chief Jeremy Bullens will reunite with Brad Keselowski. The bullens brad combo won four races in 2020 with Team Penske, made it to the championship four that season. Since then, Bullens has stayed within the Penske pipeline, working with Austin Sindrick, winning the 2022 Daytona 500. Most recently, he's worked with Harrison Burton, winning the Summer Daytona race this past season. But now Jeremy Bullens joins RFK Racing. I like this move a ton. Obviously, Bullens and Keselowski already have some chemistry, recent success. But honestly, signing any Team Penske guy is a big win, in my opinion. Team Penske may not have the fastest cars all throughout the season, but they consistently show up in the biggest moments year after year after year. Can't hurt to have another Team Penske guy on your team. I like this move from RFK Racing. Let's talk RCR, Richard Childress. They announced a plethora of moves yesterday. First and foremost, Keith Rodden has now been promoted to Vice President of Competition. Johnny Klossmeyer comes over from Stuart Haas, will now be RCR's Technical Director. Joining him from Stuart Haas is Richard Boswell, who will be Austin Dillon's crew chief. Randall Burnett will continue to work with Kyle Busch on the eight car, so some significant personnel shake up within the walls of RCR. Let's break it down. Getting a couple veteran guys from Stuart Haas is solid, not bad. I'm still not sold on Keith Rodden. Justin Alexander's been trying to get off the road for years, bringing Richard Boswell in to work with Austin Dillon, I think is a solid choice. Lord knows the three team needs something. The past two years have been awful awful for Austin Dillon and the number three bunch. I'm not sure how Kyle Busch fans feel about Randall Burnett. Let me know down in the comments. I think he's good. He won three races with Tyler Reddick before Kyle Busch got there. I don't think there was necessarily an obviously better candidate on the market, so I'm cool with Randall Burnett and Kyle Busch running it back for year three. At least there's some consistency there. But uh, Kyle Busch fans, let me know if you agree, disagree. Is there someone out there I'm not thinking of that would have made sense, would have been a great pairing? Let me know. While we're talking about crew chiefs, yesterday, James Small, now Chase Briscoe's crew chief at Joe Gibbs Racing, went on Sirius XM NASCAR radio, expressed excitement about working with Briscoe, but also appeared to throw some shade, perhaps, at his former driver, Martin Truex Jr. It's just going to be really great to actually have somebody, you know, for one that lives in North Carolina and two comes into the shop multiple times a week. So, uh, you know, we can actually build the team around him. And I see what James Small is trying to do. He's trying to pay Chase Briscoe a compliment. We know Chase Briscoe has a strong work ethic, a desire to be great. But at the same time, Small's comments come off as a criticism of Martin Truex Jr. So what, Truex wasn't living in North Carolina? He wasn't coming to the shop regularly? You couldn't build a team around Truex? That's what those comments imply. I have two thoughts on this. First... I do think Martin Truex Jr. phoned it in most of last season. I do not think he was putting in the work necessary to be great in the NASCAR Cup Series. We saw lots of mistakes. We often joked on this show about Truex having one foot on a fishing boat already. So I get James Small's frustration. And we know there has been some pent-up frustration. Remember that awkward clip of the uh, 119 crew member trying to block the cameras from showing James Small yelling at a TRD official? James Small has been frustrated with Truex for months, I would guess. And I don't blame him. I do believe Martin Truex Jr. was disengaged much of 2024. That's frustrating if you're James Small. Your main partner is not putting in the work required. A lot of the pressure then falls on you. There's only so much you can do. So I get James Small's frustration. That's point number one. Point number two, though... These kinds of comments from James Small, whether he meant to throw shade at Martin Truex Jr. or not, 
are not going to win over many fans. Fans, I think fairly, have been questioning James Small now for years. Truex was better with Cole Pern. Why hasn't James Small been able to unlock that same potential? I mean, look at these numbers. They don't lie. In the five years with Cole Pern, Truex averaged almost five wins a year, 1,400 laps led, versus you can see the five years with James Small. The numbers all dip. Nowhere close to Truex at his peak. So that's my second point. I love the confidence from James Small, but he has a lot to prove. And subtly throwing shade at a Hall of Fame driver a week after he retires is going to put an even bigger target on your back. Everything James Small and Chase Briscoe do next season will be put under a microscope. I love the confidence from James Small, but you gotta walk the walk a little more before you start talking the talk, at least in my opinion. That was just my read of those comments. Again, I think he was mainly trying to pay Chase Briscoe a compliment, which is good, but as a result, he also heavily implied that what Martin Truex Jr. was doing was not good enough. So see it both ways. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And while you're down there, let me know what your expectations for Chase Briscoe and James Small are going into 2025. That's enough crew chief talk for this Thursday. Let's talk Circuit of the Americas. NASCAR has unveiled a new layout for Coda ahead of their March 2nd, 2025 date. I guess I gotta update my wall art here or else people are gonna start thinking I'm a Formula One fan. Here's a look at the old layout versus what they will run next season. The old course is 3.4 miles. The new layout is only 2.3, a lot shorter. Overall, I like these changes. I think the good outweighs the the bad, the good. Caution periods will be shorter. We won't have to go a full lap waiting for pit road to open. Cautions can be expedited. That's a positive. I think the at-track experience will be better. NASCAR says the race length will likely move from 68 to probably close to 100 laps, so fans in the stands will get to see the cars come by their seats 30 times more. And at least for NASCAR, they didn't put a lot of seats back there in turn 11, so cars would go up over the hill and you wouldn't see them for a while until they finally came back into view. So I think the at-track experience is improved. The bad is that you're losing that turn 11 passing zone, and the lack of a long straightaway could impact the turn 12 passing zone. Now, some of this could be compensated by having more laps, which means more cracks at turn one, which is a great passing zone. So maybe that issue will offset itself. We'll see, but... Point stands, I think there are more positives than negatives by them making this change. Circuit of the Americas, the third race of the year in 2025. Big weekend, a lot of eyeballs. Hopefully it's a good show. Finally, we will wrap things up today by discussing the latest legal developments. A few big things have happened in the nearly two weeks since 2311 and Front Row were denied their injunction request. One, the teams filed for an appeal. Two, NASCAR decided to waive the you can't sue us clause from the open agreement. And three, 2311 announced the signing of Riley Herbst, adding a third full-time team. As a result of these many changes, it looks like 2311 and Front Row are headed back to the drawing board. Last night, they rescinded their appeal request, saying in an official statement, quote, Circumstances have changed in the underlying case, removing the need for this appeal and necessitating appellants to seek new relief from the district court. So with all of the recent changes, it sounds like 2311 and Front Row are likely going to file a new injunction request with new arguments based on the latest evidence. Based on what I've read, that seems to be the most likely next step, but we'll have to wait and see. The good news for the teams, NASCAR removing that controversial clause from the open agreement ensures that 2311 and Front Row can race next year without jeopardizing this lawsuit. That's good news for the teams, but it's also bad news. That move by NASCAR, combined with 2311 signing Riley Herbst, could make their injunction arguments more difficult. 2311 and Front Row have to prove that they would suffer irreparable harm by not being allowed to race as chartered teams next year. If they failed to prove that before, I'm not sure how easy it'll be to prove now. It's important to remember that none of this necessarily impacts the larger antitrust case. If the case gets to the discovery stage, that will put some pressure on NASCAR, who wants to keep as many records as they can private. But until then, 
the ball is in the team's court, and NASCAR's defense is proving difficult to crack. So, obviously, I'm no legal expert, so I don't want to overly speculate on what the teams are going to do next. That's just the latest from the lawsuit. The teams have withdrawn their injunction appeal. They could file a new injunction. They have the right to do that. New arguments, new evidence, whatever they may have. We'll see what happens. This is all just getting started. Anyway, that is going to do it for this episode, y'all. If you've missed any of my other videos from this week, there have been a ton of announcements. Riley Herbst to 2311 yesterday, uh, the day before that. Ryan Priest to RFK, official. Back on Monday, I graded every Cup Drivers 2024 season. Be sure to check that video out if you missed it. Thanks for watching, folks. That's all I've got. Leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more NASCAR discussion every single day, even during the offseason. Big thank you to my Patreon supporters as well. Busy week, busy offseason. I will see you all again soon. Thanks for watching.